There are a lot of supervillains in the DC Universe, and I do mean a lot. And quite a few of them have insanely powerful abilities. And as such, when you put them in prison, it's pretty hard to keep them there. Yes, prisons like the Bell Rev do have power dampeners, and the walls are so thick that supposedly even Superman can't punch his way through them. But prison breaks have happened there and prisoners have escaped, because it's still just a prison made of metal and concrete. Though of course it is a hell of a lot better than Blackgate or Arkham Asylum. After all, villains break out of them nearly every day. But there are other prisons in the DC Universe that are a hell of a lot harder to break out of. Prisons so inescapable that even gods themselves have been trapped inside them. And this video is going to look over the most inescapable prisons that exist in the DC Universe. The Speed Force The Speed Force is what gives the Flash and the other speedsters of DC Comics their super speed and other abilities. Very few people are actually able to enter the Speed Force, and even the Flash family can struggle to get access to it. Now there are some continuities, such as the Flash TV show, where they can get into the Speed Force relatively easy. But for the most part, it is difficult to get in, and even harder to get out of. Even speedsters have been trapped in the Speed Force for years, and there are actually some speedsters who still haven't found a way out of it. And unless you have Speed Force powers, there's no way to get out. Unless the speedster comes in to get you, of course. And all of this makes the Speed Force an absolutely amazing prison because it's a prison without walls, doors, or locks. It's another dimension that damn near no one can access, let alone escape from. So unless the prisoner has speed force powers, they can't really get out. Admittedly, this does depend on the continuity, but in the main DC universe, the speed force is debatably the most secure prison that there is, because without speed force powers, you just can't get in or out of it. And you also don't have to monitor the prison or manage it, which means it's very cost effective, because you can just throw a prisoner in there and then forget about it, because they can't get out. And you can, technically speaking, release them whenever you like. Although, as I say, getting them out can be a bit tricky, as it's possible once they're in there, you won't be able to get them free. So you do have to be careful who you put in the Speed Force, because it's quite possibly a life sentence. The Phantom Zone This is the prison that is favoured by Krypton, and that Superman's father, Jor-El, actually discovered and pioneered and then later on Superman adopted this as his own prison. And like the Speed Force, this is a separate dimension that is a nightmare to get into and even harder to get out of. Although the inside of the Phantom Zone is nowhere near as nice as the Speed Force, it is actually quite horrible in there, as some versions just have phantoms and other creatures roaming through it and not much else other than rocks. There are some different continuities where it changes, but in pretty much all of them, it's not a nice place to be. Although with that being said, in most continuities, those who go into the Phantom Zone do not age, and they don't need food, air, or water, as the dimension pretty much preserves them in the exact state they were in when they entered the dimension, meaning they can be in there pretty much indefinitely. Even if a person is mortally wounded, they can still survive in the Phantom Zone, whereas in the real world, they would die. In fact, in the Injustice universe, when Superboy's heart is punctured by Superman, he is put inside the Phantom Zone and kept there for over five years and is still alive. Whereas if he'd been left in the real world, he would have died in minutes. Which is of course why he was put in the Phantom Zone in the first place. And when he was released, he still would have died because he was still injured. Except for the fact that Batman was able to set up a heart transplant for him and so they're able to save his life. But the point is, you come out of the Phantom Zone exactly the same way as you go into it. But the reason Superman mainly favours this prison is because it's a great way to get rid of those who are too powerful to be contained in any conventional way. Such as Doomsday, who, let's face it, couldn't be stopped by any prison. And the Phantom Zone also contains quite a lot of Kryptonians, all of whom are of course as powerful as Superman. These are mainly leftover criminals from Krypton, who were meant to be released once they're better, but couldn't be of course since Krypton was destroyed. Though Superman has periodically released some of these criminals when their sentence is up and put them in the bottle city of Kandor. And unlike the Speed Force, this dimension can be accessed at any time with a Phantom Zone projector. Meaning the sentence can be as long or as short as you want it to be. You could actually put someone in there for 500,000 years, because they would survive that long. Although that would be pretty insanely cruel. But this ability to put someone in and out whenever you want, as long as you've got the right technology, does kind of make it better than the Speed Force, as that can only be accessed by someone with Speed Force powers, whereas this one could be regulated by anyone with the right tech. 
Although with that said, this does mean that a prison break is easier to arrange, so long as you've got the right technology. The Source Wall As I said, some of the prisons on this list have even contained gods. And this one has held Promethean giants, titans, and even Darkseid himself has been trapped on this wall. And for those who don't know what it is, the Source Wall is basically a wall that separates DC's universe from whatever lies beyond the edge of DC's universe. So it's just a giant wall around the very edge of the universe. Although in the New Rebirth continuity, it's said that the Source Wall was designed to keep Perpetua contained. And Perpetua is one of the oldest and most powerful beings in the universe who is responsible for creating the multiverse. And she is also the mother of both the Monitor and the Anti-Monitor. And this Source Wall imprisons you if you touch it, basically turning you to stone and making you a part of the wall as a stone statue, trapped there for all of time. Now with that being said, there have been a few occasions when people have been freed from the wall, but it is extremely difficult to do. Firstly, this is because it's on the edge of the universe, which means it's just so far away from pretty much everything that the distance can't even be measured. In fact, the DC Universe is so big that you would essentially define it as infinite. So this means that getting to the wall can take quite a long time if you don't have the right travel technology. Now true, there are some who can reach it whenever they want, but most people can't. And of the few who can reach it, even fewer still could actually release someone from it. Now Superman was actually able to rip Darkseid off of the wall and free him, even though he was the one who stuck him there in the first place. Though it did take all of his strength, and afterwards he appeared to be so weakened that Darkseid was able to throw Superman into the wall, and then Superman became the one who was trapped. Though very few beings in the universe are able to match the raw power of Superman, meaning very few people could just rip someone off of the wall. In fact, it took five different Supergirls to free Superman, because they just weren't strong enough on their own. And the true beauty of this prison is that it doesn't seem to matter how powerful you are, you can be trapped here. Now I know I have just said that the Phantom Zone can trap really powerful people like Doomsday, and that's true. But this wall was able to trap Perpetua, possibly the most powerful being who's ever existed. It's also been able to trap Superman and Darkseid, which means this Source Wall may actually be the best prison in the DC Universe, because it seems able to contain literally the most powerful beings that have ever existed. Although unfortunately, the Source Wall has recently been destroyed, meaning it's no longer a viable option as a prison. This is because Perpetual was freed and the wall was destroyed in the process. But it has been a prison for millions, if not billions of years, and it has held gods and titans, so it definitely deserves to be on this list. The Omega Sanction Now this is Darkseid's private prison. Well, actually Darkseid has quite a lot of private prisons. He is an intergalactic despot who rules many planets after all. But the Omega Sanction is his most inescapable prison, and the prison's also known as the Death That Is Life, and as the Life Trap. And it's a special power of Darkseid where he uses his Omega abilities to imprison a person inside the Omega Sanction, which is basically an isolated dimension in which a person lives a terrible life of torture until they die, and then they are reborn and live another life, and die again, and then come back to life, and carry on in an endless cycle. Each time they are reborn, the universe they live in gets darker and darker, and they live worse, more pain-filled lives. And they do this for all of eternity. Now that isn't to say that Darkseid can't release them if he wants to. Of course he can let anyone out whenever he wants, but he's not exactly known for his mercy. So if he puts you in here, he's probably not going to let you out again. Although Mr. Miracle was actually able to escape from this prison, after being tortured through several lives and dying though. And next to the Source Wall, this is definitely DC's most inescapable prison. And since the Source Wall has now been destroyed, it is DC's most inescapable prison. But it's also the worst prison to live in, as you are tortured for all eternity. And I do have to say that when I say you are tortured, I don't mean you're literally stabbed and cut like a standard torture room. You live a normal life. You have friends, you have a job, you have people you fall in love with. The only difference is, they're all evil and set out to hurt you. So you get betrayed by those you care about, you have your organs stolen by loved ones, you get beaten, you get your money stolen, you get to live on the street. It's torture in every sense of the word, not just pain but emotional, and you're forced to live out these horrific lives over and over again. This is literally the worst place to end up in the DC Universe. Though thankfully, Darkseid doesn't use this power very often. In fact, outside of the comic books, Darkseid doesn't seem to have ever actually had this ability. But he does still have this power, and he can use it on whoever he likes. But
but he seems to save it for those that he wants to truly make suffer. Now you may wonder why he doesn't use it more often since Darkseid is basically Space Hitler. Well, the reason is most likely that people in the real world are useful to him. He can manipulate them in ways to get an advantage or gain ground. He has mind-washed Superman several times and used him to his advantage, so that might be why he doesn't use it on him. I can't say for sure, of course, but that does make sense. And after he has basically exploited every possibility a person has to offer, he probably sends them here as a last little stab in the gut to really screw them over. He is, like I said, Space Hitler, so he's not a nice guy. And lastly, I feel I should mention the Green Lantern Science Cells, which is the prison of the Green Lantern Corps. This is more of a conventional prison than the others I've mentioned, and it has amazing cells capable of containing some seriously powerful threats, from the Emerald Empress to Superboy Prime. But since both of these individuals escape during prison breaks, along with dozens of other prisoners who have escaped over the years, this prison is nowhere near as secure as the others on this list. But I did think that it deserved to be mentioned, because of all the conventional prisons in the DC Universe, this one is the most secure and the hardest to escape from. Even though people have escaped from it in the past, I know, but it is still the most secure of the conventional prisons. Now, of course, the ones that I have mentioned on this list are not completely inescapable, as people have actually escaped from all of them. But in the DC Universe, it's impossible to lock someone up permanently. I mean, every supervillain eventually escapes. There's literally no such thing as a prison in the DC Universe that hasn't had at least one person escape from it at some point. I mean, as I've said, some of these prisoners are literally gods, so you can't keep them contained forever. But of all the prisons that do exist, these are the most secure. And personally, I'd say the best one of these to be trapped in is without a doubt the Speed Force because being in the Speed Force can actually be a very pleasant place. The dimension can actually change and mold itself based on your own desires, so you could actually have a lot of fun there. And many have had great epiphanies during their stays, such as Deathstroke did when he was briefly imprisoned in the Speed Force. But which one of these is your favorite prison, and which one do you think is the worst one to be locked in, and the hardest to escape from? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.